Welcome to New Eden FM. We have the music and the news to enhance your Sunday. I am the Laundry of the Galaxy. We are live in game in the Curious System at the House of Records Information Center Station, where we are consulting a few experts on a database to track all the shifting of players going on right now in Nullsec, because there is a lot of that going on. Now, here in the studio with me is our producer, Maestro McKenzie. How are you doing this morning? I am doing pretty well. I think that uh, New Eden Capsuleers tend to be a migratory uh, species. But as for me, when I'm not there, I am certainly not such a migratory oh, species. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, there you go. Wouldn't be a show without them. Someone's got to be in the studio, right? Someone's got to run everything. Uh, you guys have all the fun out in deep space. There you go, and I, I tell you what, there is a lot going on. I, I, when I say a database to track everything going on, I'm not joking with everything shifting, and everybody moving north, south, east, west, up, down, left, right. You don't know which way is coming or going. I, I tell you what, I, there's so many of me out there in the galaxy experience all this. Some of me don't know which way is coming and which way is going right now, so I'm right there with y'all. So, uh... I know what's going on, and I'm, I'm, I'm I, I hear you. But I tell you what, we've we've got some interesting things to talk about coming up. I tell you what, Fountain uh, <laughs> once again is on fire. I, I I have to tell you, and and those anybody who knows anything about the history of Eve, when I say Fountain is on fire, oh you just gosh. have to add again. I found his known uh, stability yeah. since the fall of Pantheon. <laughs> yeah, so once more, yes. Fountain is on fire, and so we'll, we'll have to bring you the latest to what's going on there. And uh, obviously there's there's a few other things going on. And little sprinklings, little birdies telling us this and that. We'll be telling you what those birdies tell us. Good, good. So, um, while our wonderful host prepares to do that, today is Hip Hop Sunday, which means that we have all those really awesome tracks that, uh, I guess we, we observed a lot during the, um, the early 90s and, um, in the 2000s uh -huh. as well. Uh, of course, we do some of the newer stuff, like, uh, so we Well... Welcome back for New Eden News. All right. Uh, we did have a patch here just this last uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, but uh, given the size of the patch notes, it was kind of uh, light on the patch notes given the size of the patch. So probably prepping us for what's coming next week already. So, uh... We do have a new Concord Pass going, though. That is something that did start with this uh, most recent uh, Thursday uh, on June 2nd there. Uh, so make sure that you've uh, redone your thing. If you do the uh, carry it over every week, uh, you kind of get used to not setting it. But you, you've got a new season now, so make sure you go into your Concord and make sure you're getting your points. Um... They uh, have announced the uh, 
new inscription of the galaxy conquest ranking so you can uh, view that in the game um, additionally uh, with this uh, patch you've got uh, where the neon rain and the trailblazer series nano cores uh, can now be uh, um, exchanged and uh, the, the nano core cooldown has been lowered to one day so you can now once a day you can change your nano core I don't know anybody who actually does it that often to, to need a cooldown like that, oh, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I don't know who that particular change was catering to, but um, so uh, somebody must have complained that they needed it, and so now we have it. So in, enjoy that. Uh, we do ha also have something pretty cool here, though. It's called a drone self-destruct command. It says in order to enhance emergency response capability capsuleers in combat encounters, the self-destruct command for drones has now been made available by Concord. If a capsuleer's drone or fighter is being ambushed while in long distance combat, you may tap your drone in the overview or in the space and select the self-destruct command in the menu. The drone deals minor damage to targets within a small range by self-destructing. As such, it is not suitable as conventional means of combat. You know somebody's unconventionally going to find, figure out a way. Yes, I'm going to send a whole bunch of Mark III drones at you. Yeah, go ahead and shoot them. Yes, please. Boom, boom. Okay, more, more Mark III drones, and they just have a whole hole full of them. Like a whole bunch of little tiny mines. That I would imagine that you. that probably scales uh, by, um, by the type of drone. You know, probably by the overall DPS that the drones can push out, because... I could see that being abused. <laughs> you, you, you would hope, you would hope, but I don't know. I'm, I'm sure somebody out there is already looking at this and finding some way to, to abuse it gloriously. So I, I, if you, <laughs> I would like to hear about whatever, uh -huh. whatever, uh, uh, whatever thing you find with the self destruct until they get it perfected. I'm sure there's something entertaining that is going to happen. I want to hear about it. Because that's that that just to me just that, that just screams little minds that shoot you and if you shoot them back they explode. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Okay, they uh, of course they uh, optimized the market transaction record. Uh, they added a check detailed info button to the science tips. I don't even know what that means, uh, but if you have apply a science you're probably enjoying that. Uh, they have optimized the operation of customer service for improved convenience. Players may now seek help by directly sending messages through customer service. Oh, I bet you that's fun. Uh, they have uh, updated the icons for modules, including Capital Energy Nosferatu. 2. Yeah, I did notice that the Capital modules looked a little different there. Uh, when Battle Assist is activated, the AI will automatically turn off if the ship encounters a gravitational wave. Oh, okay, well. Uh, when Battle Assist is activated, if both shield and armor are less than 20%, the ship will automatically wrap to a star or dock in a station. I'm assuming that's warp to a star or dock in a station. Um, uh, wait, what? It, it does say automatically wrap on, on the uh, on mm -hmm. their thing, so uh, I didn't quite catch typo. that. It's probably a typo. That's what I'm probably figuring. It's probably automatically warp. Okay, uh, they did do a, a couple of bug fixes as well. They fixed an issue where the destruction of a drone group may render the remaining drones inoperable. Uh, they fixed uh, position of mining barges, including the retriever in the ship tree. Uh, they fixed a display issue where the implant floor state may not be shown after re-log in. And they fixed a display issue where the number of fighter groups is not shown. So if you were having problems with any of those, that should be corrected now. So that, that'll be a good thing. Of course, we uh, also we do have a Q&A here. So we have, uh, looks like we have uh, four questions. So, 
uh, oh, it was the first one is in Spanish that's why I wasn't understanding uh, the translation on this is uh, what should you do more tutorials for new items okay wait I'm Obviously sorry please repeat good. that Obviously, not a very good translation. Uh, their, their translation on this is what should you do more tutorials for new items? Um, <clears throat> um, um, so, I'm, I'm guessing that's a suggestion to maybe make more tutorials for people to get I, items or something. Yeah. Que dieres de hacer más tutoriales para los. Objetos nuevos. I don't know. I think your accent needs a little it, work, doll. It probably does. <laughs> All right. It says, hi there. New items are generally related to some new gameplays or events. If the new items are causing you any confusion, checking out the rules and instructions on the gameplay or event page might help. Okay. <laughs> I don't really okay. know if that really answers your question. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not sure if I understood the question at all. But okay. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm just. We're just going to chalk that question up to a confusion and move on. I think. I'll be honest. I, like, I, it's worse when when you know when the questions are actually written and and there's nothing wrong with the original language except the fact that the person can't spell their original language and. I've yeah. had a few people that do that with English. <laughs> it's just, oh yeah, you sit there and try to figure out like how to decode that. Because, but anyway, Ooh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Okay. Next one is uh, greetings. When operating an orca using a mining foreman module, a combat aggression timer is activated. I understand the reasoning for this with other command modules. However, I am curious about the logic behind this on the mining one. When I feel the holds on my ship and try to dock up, I must wait for this timer to run out before the station will allow it. Obviously, this cannot be the cannot be a lore justification, balance, or a combat issue. Please explain this. Thank you. All right. Well, okay. If you're you're an orca pilot, maybe you're wondering this. So uh, let's take a look what your answer is. They say, thank you for bringing this to our attention. We believe that this might be a bug, and we will fix it as soon as possible. Hey. Wait, well, I'm hey. sorry. Wait, was was he talking about the uh, the command modules, like why you can't dock when there's a command module running? Uh, with the uh, mining foreman module. Um, not 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 one of the uh, the like the shield or the armor. Yeah, but that's you know, the it's the permit. same thing. It, it's it's literally a mining director uh, module. It's the same yes. thing. I doubt that that's a bug. It, it works the same way in EO. Well, yes, but um, net in e Mike says that that's a bug. Uh, 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 he says it's a bug. <laughs> this is official netties. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just. I I, I yeah. I, 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 <laughs> so I, you know, if you're uh, uh, maybe they they're maybe they're trying to give, you know, they've they they've done so much industrial penetration. Maybe they're trying to be nice to industry for once. Yeah, maybe it's a possibility, I guess. I know. I I I really want to believe that 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 they that they know that this is how it works in their game. I I really want to believe that maybe it is a bug and I, oh man, I, I, I okay okay please move on. All right, let's go on to the next one. This room should be fun. It looks fun. Okay, please can you add Cyber X N C into Exchange Mod? When the event go out, I made a huge mistake, and I want to change it into different one. Thanks, BR. Right, Good luck, BR. Thanks. All right. Their response. Thanks for getting in touch with us. We're working on adding more series of core exchange in the game. Rest assured, that we'll, and we'll keep you posted on any update. Let's appreciate your patience and understanding. Okay, that was a pretty good. That was pretty good, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so Cyber X, not yet, but maybe soon. Who knows? Mm, never know. Oh. All right. Let's go with the last one here. It says, greetings. I can't wait to put my hands on my mining ship, unlocking their AI capabilities. Is there any plans or improvement in their development in the future? Thank you for response. Kudos to y'all developer team of Evacos. Okay, a little, little butter on there on that uh, question there. Let's, let's see how they did. They said, hi there. We are pleased to receive such a suggestion as it is exactly what our team is currently working on. We are considering how to add this feature in a suitable and convenient way. Please stay tuned. So, AI mining. I mean, when you think about it, that it, it actually makes more sense than AI combat. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. I mean, but, uh, you know, you have to ask yourself the question, you know, how, how would that work? I mean, you know, are you going to set it up where any time the, the hull is full, it automatically just warps to a station, docks in the station, dumps all the stuff into the station, and then, you know, and then warps out? And, you know, how are you going to control the how where it goes? You know what I mean? If the, there are multiple stations in this system, like if it's a SOV system or something, and if you, I'll be honest, if you're mining out there by yourself your AI mining and uh, in Nullsec you're probably wait just waiting to get killed but yeah I don't know that's yeah that's an interesting concept yeah I mean yeah interesting concept it really really uh, I, I yeah I mean just everything in this game is, is AFKable it's 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 AFK. Yay. Yeah, that's right. And and speaking of which, you know, uh, that's actually still going on. I mean people are still like actually writing the scripts? Like writing them, writing this them and people, people people are still botting. There was a <sighs> big thing on on Reddit about that, but that, that's oh, going to be in our state of the war segment because that that Jeez. actually has to do with something going on in the war currently. So wow, hey look, I think that I think that uh, everyone might might have a little bit of fun if uh, they can get their Eve interpretation of the Clone Wars, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Okay then. Well, and uh, cover that during the uh, the news segment right now. Your music, your voice, and your weekly update on all things Eve. This is your Eve Echo State of the War Report. Welcome back to the State of the War, brought to you by Echoes.Moby, the best Kimmel bot available here in New Eden. All right. Now, we've got a lot to report on. A lot to report on. Now, some of y'all, y'all may not be aware of this, but uh, Silent has recolonized Declan. Now, you might, some of you might be thinking, what, they, they dropped a citadel or two? No, <laughs> no, no. No, 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 no. There, there are, are count them at least 21, I think 21 Silent Federation citadels, uh, like 20 and, uh... I mean... It, there's, there's, there's Mop 5 citadels, there's Care Bears with, uh, guns, have some citadels. And of course, Red Sea has, uh, five citadels up there in, uh, in Declan now, and, uh... Yeah. I'll be honest I wonder with you. What, 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 uh, what's going on there? I... I, I knew that that would happen because the thing the thing is, a lot of silence war tactics and war mentality comes from goon swarms. It comes from goon swarm in Eve Online, and everyone knows that goon swarm is one of the most resilient groups in Eve Online. They lost all of their space. They lost all of it. They got pushed out of their space. They waited until people stopped paying attention to them. They waited until their enemies started fighting amongst themselves. And you know what they did? They went right back in and claimed their space. And that's exactly what Silent did. It's it's not it, it's not what you would call um, 
revolutionary what they did, but I mean, I, I'll be honest, I could have called that if they, if the hippos did not keep pressure on them, I knew that was going to happen. They were just going to drop, you know, like take it right yeah. back. And the fact that a few weeks ago, they were actually pushing other groups that were looking to colonize the North out was a, you know, it was, it was kind of obvious that what was going to happen next. I mean... <laughs> I mean, who didn't well, see yes. that coming? And, <laughs> and, and, of course, Silent has confined their, their recolonization of the North to uh, Declan. And uh, there's uh, information out of some of the smaller groups that have, uh, you know, started settling other places that there's been pressure on them to uh, pay rent and things like that, uh, particularly in Fade. Fade that was, there was a, a lot of that going on there. Um, citadels destroyed even so uh, a lot of uh, interesting things happening in the north there oh uh, well I mean you know when um, the um, when the hippos away I suppose that um, what do hippos eat anyways I, I don't remember well par apparently uh, it, it depends on which hippo you're talking about uh, <laughs> I, I think they're I, I don't know. I don't even know. Remember, these these hippos evolved from crabs, so they have a very strange diet. I have no idea. And there's even some cat involved in here because uh, obviously we we have to talk about something that uh, Meow has been up to because uh, Meow obviously uh, one of the members of the uh, the hungry hippos, but uh, they with uh, their allies, the uh, wild geese, have a. Uh, successfully pushed um, myth uh, out of fountain so uh, once again wow. fountain is on fire man that is that's got to be pretty rough and I mean um, fountain has not seen stability since the fall of Pantheon when Pantheon was there when when it was colonized that way it was it was stable but it was stable because it was all one unit ever since the fall of Pantheon fountain has been a powder keg you can't you can't expect to colonize Fountain and and survive, you know, have your stuff survive for very long. Uh, yeah. Anyone that goes into into uh, into Fountain, you have to go in with the impression that you're probably going to going, you know, lose. You're going to lose your stuff eventually. It may not be today. Yeah. It may not be tomorrow. But eventually, you are going to lose your stuff. It's that simple. Yeah, yeah. That that is that is very true. Uh, traditionally, Fountain has not been a. Uh, beacon of stability however uh it isn't worth pointing out though that uh while uh, meow they did take all of uh myths uh, citadels uh, nil uh one of myths uh, corporations did retake one of their citadels uh in 9d uh so that's an interesting plot twist there to the uh to the uh overall steamroll of uh, myth uh, they, they did come back and uh, it's like Vikings in the bushes you know they were myth is uh, a Hala alliance so they were all about Vikings and, and going to Valhalla and some of the Vikings weren't quite ready so they were hiding in the bushes and took back a citadel I guess I'm not I sure think, what uh, happened there but, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that no did that a little stuff. bit better but it's okay yeah yeah so how is the alliance itself faring? Because that's that's pretty rough when you get just you know, oust. Well, yeah. Well, the, uh, the alliance is, is uh, from my understanding, not faring too well. Ouch. Uh, I, I do know that uh, DBL has gone to Beer Alliance, so uh, that is is one thing that is, has happened there. And uh, from my understanding, for the most part. Uh, um, myth is uh, they've evacuated uh, their space, obviously, and uh, actually uh, alliances, I guess, one so. of their uh, yeah, I guess one of, one one of their uh, one of their leaders uh, uh, he was a uh, I believe a director in uh, uh, Necromongers uh, lore actually posted on Reddit about this uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, he he posted uh, about uh, specifically his capsuleer outpost uh, which was named Atlantis uh, which survived 41 armor timers and three hull timers uh, wow, that guy's a champ for counting of, uh, 
Yeah, through the wars of TF, Happy Bees, Pantheon, and Myth. It was uh, it was anchored in uh, 10, 10, 20. So it was uh, it was uh, two months into the less than, yeah, but about two months into the game. This game started uh, mid October of 2020, right? Oh jeez, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead yeah. and say that nothing that's I believe so. deployed in Eve is designed to last forever. Just yeah, that's that's can... true. But I mean, that is that is a uh, you know October 10th of uh, 2020 is whenever that thing was anchored, and that uh that's whenever uh it's it's dead now though. He he killed it. it died by the hands of a creator. I mean that's so, good. Uh, since uh yeah. But uh, he had, he, he, uh, he did have a, a, a long story there about uh, that. If you want to go over to uh, Reddit to read that whole story, but he he does he does make some very interesting uh, things in here, and uh, he uh, goes into uh, some accusations about Boop and and kind of what that struggle, what was behind that struggle. Uh, it, and it had to do with, uh, from, uh, according to his, uh, post here, it had to do with, uh, botting. Uh, there was a, a large group of botters, apparently, in Boop, uh, in the, in Boop slash VLT slash Risk. Um, and he, he makes some very interesting, um, claims in there about, uh, does, does the, the fact that does it uh, have proof behind those claims? Like, does he uh, does he actually have proof on that one? Because that'd be interesting. Goes he goes into quite a bit of detail here, uh, and uh, he does in fact uh, have a Discord there with a lot of a uh, lot of evidence that he laid out. And, um, yeah, so, um, it's going to be interesting to see what the uh, response is at, because, uh, basically, he, he does accuse the, uh, uh, Crab Coalition of, uh, protecting the, uh, botters there. And I mean, everything so I mean if his evidence is compelling and you know people um, people think that it's you know it's legitimate then it's a good complaint if if <laughs> I mean if not then it's kind of hard to say I mean how many how many people that are just like super salty right after they lose something just go off on all these accusations it's like sometimes they're looking for any little thing that could be what they consider to be evidence right and you're just like it, yeah and, and, yeah, and this happened and this happened and this happened right <laughs> this is true this is true but uh that, that's something that uh i i guess you're gonna have to to take a look at the evidence and, and make your up your mind on that because uh he, he does lay all that out there he calls it his uh a christmas gift to the uh community so uh yeah there there is uh some definitely not just fire in fountain in game but uh setting social media on fire here too and uh of course a day later um about coups from uh uh boop laid out a uh two-year story of Boop versus Myth on uh, Reddit, I guess, in a response. I might. But, um... Yeah, he lays out um, a uh, mutual grudge uh, between Myth and Boop that goes back two years, and he lays out uh, a whole big, long story about... Uh, different uh accusations of uh things that uh myth has done and with threat c and things like that that uh, have instigated boop and things like that so 
the other side has, has been posted there on Reddit as well. Uh, it's always important to uh, make sure that you do read both sides, and uh, usually the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Uh, oh but, uh, yeah, both of those, I know, but uh, found fires from drama can of Reddit. You know, the fires Man, in Fountain can be seen in the drama of Reddit, drama, you know. Reddit <laughs> it really drama. is, but, um, like. you know, but, I mean, it's very hard to make these kind of long, huge statements in game. So, I mean, you got to go somewhere else for that, you know, and you want to hear what people I say. I it, just, but, yeah, uh, it, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know, I know. You don't need I know, an excuse to I shoot know. people. I mean, guys, come on, we've I, I talked know, about I know. this 50,000 times. You do not need I, I an excuse know. to shoot people. You can say, I just don't like your ugly ass paint job on your ugly ass ship. I want to shoot you. It just go on a tear blowing up everyone's citadels. I mean, come on, man. But I, I do know. love the fact that there is some kind of story behind why they're doing these things. Because, hey, we are shooting you. But at least here is a list of reasons why we're shooting you. We don't have to give you these. But here's a list of them anyway. Yeah, but the uh, the post from uh, Bakus does go into a, a pretty uh, detailed thing on exactly how they executed this uh, this fight against Smith and everything like that as well, and uh, so there is a lot of there, and also some YouTube links to I guess to some battles there. So if you go over to Reddit. You you can uh, take a look at those. Uh, uh, I guess I can drop the links to those into. Uh, That's probably a good idea. The sound I mean, of us. Uh, I mean, when it comes down to it, yeah, everyone should look at this and form their own opinions concerning that. It's, 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 it's what I believe they call in politics mudslinging at this point. Uh, if it's true, then. I mean, you know, odds are devs might take a look and say, all right, guys, you know, we're going to ban this account, this account, this account, right? That'd be the most reasonable way to handle the situation. But at this point, it's it's just mudslinging. You know, it's just what one person says. And now it's... Uh, I mean, at least their story behind the, the battles. Don't you hate when you play a really cool action game and then the story and it just really sucks? It's like people always buy Call of Duty to play, you know, the PvP and to get the gameplay. But then they, they complain about how much the story sucks. The, the, the story almost always sucks. Like, I mean, yeah. in Battlefield, people buy Battlefield... For the multiplayer that's why they play that game and there's always the group that gets up there and says the story sucks again it's like guys the story sucks every single time you buy a battlefield title you should be used to it by now you play through it so that you know the controls so that you can start playing multiplayer that's what everyone does no one spends time exactly playing you know through this like they, you don't buy that 60 to 70 dollar title so you can play it for the storyline you want a good storyline buy something from square enix you want you know a good multiplayer shooter action buy something like battlefield call of duty or one of the other plethora of of shooter games out there that have really good you know co-op slash pvp gameplay but a really bad story because guess what odds are you're probably not going to get both but in this case very true in this case at least the story is well developed so i'll give them that one congratulations i applaud you too for having a really sophisticated reason for blowing one another up also congratulations to silent for uh i mean <sighs> You guys pretty much that you pulled a you pulled a goon swarm, which I I would love to say I didn't see that coming, but I did. But congratulations on doing it yeah. anyway. Like <laughs> that's well, that's yeah, and rich. and here's the thing: there there has to be something to be said for a community that can lose its space, stick together, and then re repopulate space. There has to be yeah. something said and get away with it, and get away with it. That. 
That's the thing. Yeah. They get, they're uh-huh. getting away with it. It's not like you can hide stuff. Like you can, you if you don't drop the little place markers, people don't know that you're settled there. Which is some that's an Eve Online thing, right? They are dropping stuff. Their their names are highlighting the space in big fucking letters. You know, I'm pretty sure that when Silent drops, it it, it is still purple, right? Because last time I checked, it's purple. But anyway, it's it's up there in in really big violet purple you yeah. can't miss that shit yeah and yet, yeah, it, and yet it, it, you know i i didn't expect it to last this long i'm not gonna lie i i thought that the pressure on them would last maybe for another couple of months before i guess the uh the the hippos decided that uh you know this is this is boring you know shooting their shit all the time or who knows i don't know maybe these hippos are yeah. just like waiting in the wing and until they drop all the sob and then go in and blow it all up again because hey shooting citadels is the most fun thing in the game we both know it oh yeah no 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 Sh- shooting capital other people's capital ships is the most fun thing in the game and aoa has been doing a lot of that oh man really Really? Uh-huh. Probably. Is, are they attacking Void again? Because they're always attacking Void for some reason. Well, well they, they, they've been doing some very nice uh, logout traps where they'll just trickle some people in and everything like that. And, and they'll uh, usually use a blue spy to find a target. And uh, then they'll lock that puppy down and 30 accounts will log in and, and you're dead pretty quick. That's what I mean, though. I mean, they, they're really, really, really proficient at what they do. Like... Like who? Mm-hmm. Who are they? Who's who's sitting? Uh, or whose ships are they blowing up? Like I'm just, I I need to know. Well, they 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 they've done it to Void. Uh, they've been over to Trimark. Uh, you know, they've they've they're, they're making the rounds. And bas- basically, if you're not blue to them right now, you're probably a tasty treat that they're looking to capitalize on at some point. At least they're equal opportune um, badasses. They 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 really are. Yeah. But uh, that that's 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 pretty much what's going on in the in the galaxy so far. Uh, I tell you what, uh, we do have uh, someone from the CSM, um, Bebop, uh, who's going to be with us in our Eve Talk segment here. Um, what kind of musical interlude can we have? To- on New Eden FM. Welcome back to Eve Talk. I'm here with uh, Rambo and uh, Bebop from the uh, CSM uh, Council that is, have been formed. Uh, here to uh, talk to us about uh, what the CSM is doing and uh, particularly a uh, uh, yeah, tournament that they're running as well. So uh, thank you all for joining us, Rambo and uh, Bebop. Hey, thanks for having us. As you know, I'm no stranger to the show. I uh, enjoy listening to you and uh, being on your show as well. So, uh, uh, you know, for Echoes and Union Podcast, but also a voted member of the CSM here with you today. So, yeah, we'll talk about CSM stuff and give you the update on that. All right. Well, uh, what is the CSM up to? Uh, what's going on with that? Uh, so, yeah, as uh, as the announcement that OC had posted a probably like almost two weeks ago now, maybe I think I reached I reached out to the devs um, or at least a community manager and had her forward the um, letter that we had come up with for the CSM to present to the devs. And uh, basically the uh, reply I got from that was uh, we have no statement on this as of yet. So they don't they haven't really reached us um about supporting a at least net ease supported csm since then uh we've been kind of just not really necessarily laying it back but we're kind of waiting for some sort of response from the from net ease i guess you could say so in that time we have uh, pushed for our followers to go to the official eve echoes discord you know mention the csm say hey you know um you want help with ideas to uh add new updates to the game this this is something that you could be asking the csm in which they filter out 
you know the community votes and all that type of stuff so it's like we want to keep we want to gather that chatter and put it into eve echo's discord and get people talking about it so net easy can actually see that people are talking about this and when my conversation with carrie was like you know this has been kind of a thing that's been wanted for a long time at least by the community you know we have finally done this and have pushed it to the point of this far actually holding an election on a public discord and everything and you know we're ready let's uh let's let's go to work and so that's really kind of the the basis of it right now and uh, i know we got some events coming up um who rhubarb uh was it rep who or no it was o e that had the last um event right um i want to say it was rep though for some reason it's just sorry which event are you talking about i the the previous c s uh i think oh no it was the uh it was sandman he did all the box opening yes sandman did the boxes yeah Sandman did the box opening, so that was kind of like the last uh, CSM event that we did, and then now we have this uh, new one upcoming that uh, Rhubarb can talk about. Yeah, so the uh, just to just to add, uh, we, we sent we sent out that letter. Um, we haven't gotten uh, really anything from Nettie since that that first interaction, and. Uh, for us to be successful, of course, we we need that community engagement uh, to because the the goal here isn't that you know that the current people that that were voted in are are continue to represent. The goal is to is to create you know an enduring organization, and we want and ideally that would be with NetEase's you know buy in and and rules and whatever they need to do to make this work for them. Um. And so uh, I, I'd really like to see uh, Nettie's engage with us, even if it's not that they want to talk to us currently about game issues, but to get something set up so that this can continue into the future and, and start moving down that road. But um, in the meantime, we want to you know show that continued engagement. So we've been running some uh, some events out of the the CSM Discord. Um, uh, next weekend, we're going to be running a 6v6 tournament. Uh, Sign-ups are due uh, end of day tomorrow. Um, and it's uh, uh, it's going to be... We've got about 50 billion Iskin prizes. Uh, there's a CNC uh, carrier up for first place, and then a number of Navy and uh, Navy cruisers and uh, uh, faction... or er, faction cruisers and Navy battleships uh, available for... Um, going down uh, the list. So I'm really hoping people will sign up for that and turn out. Um, right now, we've... Uh, I know of all, only a handful of teams that are, uh, that are you know, working... Uh, getting set up for it. Um, if we end up with a lower turnout, we'll probably end up uh, spending time with uh, just inviting people to show up, handing out some ships and, you know, Running some running some drills, talking about how to do tournament PvP and stuff. Um, get set up in low sec system Great. for that. And all of this is going to take place on on the uh, Echoes Player Association Discord. Um, I believe I, so. I currently have a separate Discord set up for the the team captains, but yeah, we will definitely have the um, we'll, we'll definitely have uh, any anyone who wants to watch and, and get involved in that kind of stuff. We'll have that through the uh, the Echoes uh, CSM Discord. Excellent, excellent. And uh, I did drop a link of that into the sound of us to uh, join that Discord. So if you're not on that Discord, go ahead and jump over there. Great. It's curious about the format. We're copying the Captain's Cup from uh, EVE Online that was run a couple months ago. Um, so it's entirely subcap. Uh, bring it through Battleship, one one Logi, and uh, pretty hefty fitting restrictions to try to, to both tone down the price and to, uh, to rein in a little bit of the, the insane damage that we have in Echoes. So I'm, I'm hoping this will be a little bit more level playing field than the Corp Clash stuff that uh, uh, Nettie's is running, because 
30 players is just an unreasonable ask for uh, for most corps to field at one time. Yeah, with the uh, the smaller player base that we have now. Well, I mean, even if you have a max size corp, right? If you if you have a two hundred person corp, a, and a healthy corp you know, if has about ten percent of its player base online at a given time, I would consider that a, a perfectly healthy for any organization in game. And um, fielding thirty people in a in a two hundred person corp, that's not easy. Like even if you do have a, a healthy organization. Um, and so I think it's a really unreasonable ask, especially when the the Corp Clash is designed to be corporation level and not alliance level. That's an excellent point. So how how would be the the way for them to solve that? What would be the suggestion on that? Smaller smaller teams, or or expand it to alliance level? Uh. I, I would suggest 50, uh, moving down to, if they still want to maintain the capital combat, probably 20-person teams. Um, and then the, the other thing is, really, I know Nettius isn't going to like hearing this, but raining in implants. Uh, the, the implants, there, there's such a dramatic difference uh, uh, between someone who has a, lo a level 15 implant and someone who has level 45, that it's just yeah. not a competitive... There's no room for skill to come through when when you have to be running, you know these these characters that have to spend 120, 150 billion isk before they can even fly a single ship. Um, that doesn't let you change ships, adapt to the opponent, figure out what they're going to fly, try to counterpick. It, it removes all strategy and turns it into I hope I have the right thing and my numbers are better. So maybe restricting. The, the the tournament play to no implants or level 15 or level 30 wh whatever it is it, it needs to be more restricted the general units need to be more restricted and fittings also need to be more restricted um in eo alliance tournaments we are restricted to meta level five and uh which is equivalent to the low end storyline mods in echoes they're more accessible in eos and then and then tech one rigs and the reason they did that was that there were specific, they were they were trying to re, uh, make, uh, they were trying to nerf specific comps that just kind of made themselves unkillable. We can see nearly as much unkillable stuff in Echoes, but instead it's more on the, well, I hope I don't just get one shot by everything on field, you know. So yeah, because if somebody has a high enough, you know, level forty five implant, their their alpha can just wipe some people right off the field. And yeah, the number of the implants scale very heavily with uh, rate of fire, uh, particularly focus crystal and high power coil. If uh, if you've got rate of fire rigs and multiple uh, weapon uh, upgrades in your low slots, uh, with the general units and everything, you can hit you know ten times the DPS in some cases of what your ship would be doing with like a tank fit. And really, the that should be more in the range of two, maybe three times. And most, once you stack all that stuff together, um, if you wanted to make it a more healthy playing field. Yeah. That would prevent people just getting alpha right off the field. Yep. There'd be a lot more strategy involved in that. Because, I mean, how, how do you, how do you in, in the current environment, how do you even counter that level of firepower? I mean, what, what tank can actually take that? There, so, is there even it's more? not tank. Um, the... Uh... Currently, we uh, currently tracking disruptors are extremely strong uh, in guidance disruptors. Um, I don't know if you've ever looked at the um, uh, the general units available for them, but um, we we've, we've played with like a, an RB three and uh, the the range disruption general unit, and you know we can get ships that are unable to hit stuff uh, we can get, we can target enemy battleships with them and they're able unable to hit stuff at like eight kilometers you know okay. so uh, yeah the the percentages even on the weapon disruption in echoes are actually really high and do allow some counterplay it just feels like the, the counterplay is often very binary in, in eo um i could use scripts instead of general units, which allows me to change in combat what what my 
if I'm more affecting range or if I'm affecting tracking. In Echoes, you have to pick before you ever arrive on the field. It's just a lot more roll of the dice rather than trying to adapt your strategy based on what the opponent's doing. Um, yeah. So there, there's options, uh, especially if you make the opponent miss a shot with Focus Crystal, it resets. That's huge. Um, but I, I still think that the just the raw damage is is quite unhealthy at the the present time. Yeah. But at least there is some degree of counter at least. If you can yeah. if you can counter it with ECM, then at least there's there's some way of surviving it. Exactly. Well, that's good. Well what what kind of prizes are going they're going to be with this tournament? So right now I think it's um I, I'm still securing some of this, but uh I believe it's going to be, for first place, they're going to be getting a Sand Sea Carrier, uh, four Navy Faction uh, battleships, and uh, four of the new uh, Faction Cruisers. Um, wow. Second place will be the same battleships and cruisers, but the carrier is only going to be a blueprint. Sorry, it's just what I've got. Um, oh, and, wow. then I'm, and then I'm hoping to have uh, third and fourth will probably be four of the Navy battleships and uh, some of the cruisers for fourth through eighth. But I'm still yeah, trying to secure the prize that, for third down. And that's for the whole team, obviously. That's not per Yeah, person. that's per team. So. Okay. Yeah, might, might want to clarify that at the place. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't hand out four, four carriers. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But that's that's a yeah, nice. If any alliance leaders want to jump in and help me out, I'd, I'd appreciate it. You know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, maybe maybe sweeten to help sweeten the prize pool here and get some more activity going. Yep. All right. So that, that that sounds like some really really sweet sweet prizes. And you said not many teams have signed up yet. So that that sounds like plenty of opportunity to to cash in on some of these fat prizes here, people. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So, uh, what else is the uh, CSM up to? Uh, what? What? Uh, obviously, you're waiting for a response from NetEase. Uh, uh, are Are you uh, addressing some of the uh, issues that the the game is currently facing to the players and kind of taking the temperature on things and and kind of preparing what to to speak to NetEase about? And if so, what kind of what issues are are you hoping to to raise once you're able to uh, to make the connection with NetEase? I think I uh, so I'm pretty focused on this stuff happening next weekend. Um, but after that, it'll been have been a couple of weeks uh, since we submitted that letter, and I think we're going to have to uh, have some conversations about next steps. Um, there's kind of two aspects of this. One is just demonstrating that this is wanted. You know, we had, I believe, 580-something uh, people vote for the CSM during the initial election process. Um, we, I, I would like to be able to show more than that, you know, in support in various ways. Um, and so how we go about doing that has been... It's been a subject of some contention on the Discord. Uh, some people have called for, you know, boy a limited boycott, that kind of thing. Others want want to do, uh, you know, signature gathering. There's a number of different approaches, um, but I, I do think we need something to show, you know, total numbers kind of behind this. Um, the other thing that we uh, that we have on our plate that. Um, I'm not going to speak too much about, but uh, I do think we need to get the, uh, the the Chinese player base more involved in this um, because it doesn't it doesn't help Very us true. to talk to the netties without them there. Yeah, well, certainly outreach and everything like that. I mean, have you had to be obviously the the whole CSM uh, server itself was kind of uh, born out of a giant uh, voice comm session on the. Uh, Eve Echoes uh, Discord, if I'm understanding correctly, is that right? 
Uh, I can't speak to that. I, I came in very late, Rambo. Yeah. I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, I know MJD was kind of the spearhead behind that, wanted to get that started. Uh, Rep was probably another person really pushed it at the beginning and then uh yeah uh, honestly i don't really know exactly how it was uh, brought up i uh, seem to seem to remember a rather large group of uh, voice comms happening there and then they moving over to the uh oh that new server so i i do know that <laughs> yeah i i remember that conversation where uh uh i believe damon zell wanted to talk with uh, some of the other content creators about uh, whatever the strife was at the time. And so he's like, you know what, I'm jumping in. Uh, I'm jumping in general comms and we'll just talk about this. And this isn't the first time this has happened. We've done this in the past uh, with content creators over there. And then it just gets more and more populated. And I think Damon had a video on it too. It had like 150 something people. So um, a yeah. lot of it was to do, I'm trying to remember what the, uh, the issues were of that time what kind of like kick-started that um but it it turned into you know it got heated at times um the moderators were in there so they were able to at least fit civil um but you know the topics of discussion really got people concerned about the game how the current you know how the game is currently and it's like you know we should actually do this and present it you know, do it right this time, and at least say that that we tried, right? And if NetEast doesn't want to uh, work with us on that, then I guess it, it really is up to them, you know, whether or not they want to. So the CSM team yeah. has uh, agreed to abide by whatever rules that NetEast would want to put in the So, you know, like um, NDAs and, and other s stuff that they may say that they don't really necessarily need the community knowing about um, content creators have already signed that so that's one thing but to have a csm do that too it's like okay well we'll take the info from the community what we gather we'll put it into nice bulletin points as to these are some of the things that you need to fix or prioritize or add or remove i guess you could say in the game in a in a simple you know, they don't have to read three days worth of Discord to uh, of suggestions and whatnot of people's broken uh, English and all that to be able to realize like, hey, this is an issue. We should probably prioritize this over, say, a, a new ship that they're trying to implement into the game or some other update. You know, quality of life updates in the game, I'm never going to complain about. But when it comes yeah. to new new additions to the game, um, I I do believe that some stuff could wait a little bit longer to be able to prioritize some of the stuff that a majority of the player base would rather have currently to make the game better, just naturally. Like, oh, hey, we've been playing this for three years. We haven't been able to name our ships yet. I have 17 Tempests. I don't even know what I need because I have to cycle through them all. Why just give us ship naming already, right? So it's like one yeah. of those things where we can we can give them that priority. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 really good. And and obviously there's there's going to be things that the, the CSM can can uh, bring to the uh, to net these that uh, you know it would be easier for them to hear from from a, a small group of voices speaking for a, a larger group than to be bombarded with a, a thousand requests for, for this or that, you know? Yeah, and I think it's also yeah. valuable in this case that um, we're talking about uh, some sort of democratic process because NetEase in the past has tried to use an, uh, uh, their content creator program as a replacement for a community voice and it's true the content creators because they get a lot of views to get a lot of feedback but i don't think that that's um i don't think that being able to say oh you know viewer count or whatever is really quite the same thing as being able to uh to say okay the this the communities as a whole has decided that this person represents them uh in terms of these yeah. discussions yeah because yeah. uh, there's a difference and, you know between... they they've 
come out and said I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go go ahead. You know, and, and they've come out and said like, oh yeah, we we have to rely on the content creators to be able to uh, provide this information to the communities and all this stuff and and they don't necessarily look at the feedback that they get back, at least uh, not the devs. Now, the community manager, possibly, probably. I don't know if she reads through all the chat. Um, I don't know if... Pre Are you hearing the ding off my Discord? I'm sorry about that. but um, It happened. Uh, <laughs> my, dis my Discord's going freaking crazy right now. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think Carrie... She, I don't think she really reads everything that's going on in the content creator chat to even get some sort of feedback. The only feedback that it does seem that she gets is negative feedback. And so um, they are really kind of pushed away by that. So a lot of cre a lot of content creators just naturally are negative about the game. They have a lot of complaints and nothing ever good to say. So I see that quite a bit. I try not being that guy. I want to be optimistic and say okay well you know we have some bad things but also we have a lot of good things too so why don't we work with them to figure out you know communicate this effectively uh yeah and on the depths for whatever reason oh there we go i'm sorry my connection's dropping out um it's a weak connection where i'm at so uh um, but anyway, it's they've been getting a lot of negative feedback from the CC, so uh, it, it's hard for me to say uh, and could be put to use. So I think a CSM team would be able to present that a lot better. Also help uh, the player base actually get some some answers because it 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 uh, I, I think there's a reason for. Uh, maybe the content creators, since they talk to deities more and they don't get answers, they get frustrated. I don't know what it is, but uh, it seems like there's a lot of things that we would really like answers to that uh, we never seem to get the answers to. And see, that's exactly it too. So if you ask any content creators, say, uh, you know, how how has your conversations gone with the devs? seat change a couple months ago has actually been a lot better they've been doing these amas they did the voice one um like a month or two ago now and so they are wanting to communicate more and better you know with the community and whatnot so um, i think a lot of the content creators really need to uh jump on board with that rather than you know make their videos and constantly shit on a game <laughs> yeah Yeah, positive things to report on more. Uh, well, I do think more. that they are working on that. And I, I guess I'm commenting now as a content creator rather than CSM member, but uh, they they are working on that. And I do believe, like, you know, I have a good standing relationship with Carrie, um, who's the current uh, community manager. I had a good relationship with M4A1, who was the previous one. And then uh, Joseph and Hayden, like I've talked with these people and I've generally had good conversations with these people and they can be understand. They can be, you know, you, you talk with them like, like people, right? So, well, yeah, then you, you and then you get trust and all of that. It's like, Hey, Carrie, like what's going on here? that they are trying harder and i think a lot of the especially myself i want to be able to communicate the stuff that i can say the best way as possible so i'm in conversations yeah. uh, literally every day i'm talking with the community manager about something whether it's a game mechanic um, right now i just did the corporation clash tournament uh, my corp lost so there's the update there Ooh. If, uh, yeah. we've lost him for a minute it could, it could, it could be one of the two but uh, sorry about the loss of your, your corporation there on, on the the, the uh, corporation clash there
your way over to that uh, Discord. Uh, we do have a link for that up in the uh, sound of us. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. All right. Uh, real throwback for you guys. This is talk <laughs> on New Eden FM. Welcome back on New Eden FM here. All right. Well, we're we're going to be bringing our broadcast to a close today. But before we do, uh, we do want to uh, give a shout out to everybody out there listening and uh, let you know if you have a story about something that is going on out there in New Eden, something happening in your neck of the woods, and you want to hear about it on here, and you want it to be known and talked about, give if us you a shout out. Let us know. Me, we want to hear. You definitely have a story. Yeah. <laughs> If you live in Fountain, you definitely got a story. There has been some stories coming out of Fountain, I'm sure. We want to hear about it from you, though. Give us a shout-out. You know, DM us if you want to come on the air. We're happy to have you on the air to tell your story. And if you're interested in helping us out here in the studio itself and becoming a part of the show, we do have positions available. So if you are interested in becoming a part of the show at some level, help, whether it's helping out on the Discord or, or being on the air, if you have some interest in that, let us know. We want to hear that, too. But we sure need a little bit of help around here. And di Discord getting a little dusty. I've been a little busy, but uh, there's so many of me. You'd think I could assign one to, to janitorial duties, but gosh dang it, the dust is piling up just a little bit. So <laughs> we do need a, a, a few a few extra hands around here, you know? But, uh, yeah, when, you know, if you want to become part of the show or be on it or, or, or help out on, on staff, you know, we want to hear from you. Give us a shout-out, okay? And don't forget to uh, check out the shows from our other content creators who are talking about the game we all enjoy playing here. Particularly, got Rambo's show, uh, Echoes of New Eden podcast. It's going to be coming on in about two hours, so make sure you get over there and check that out. I understand it's supposed to be a hopping show tonight where they're expecting a full crowd. So if you want to be there on Discord, you better get in there early. Check out Sheeb as well, and... Damon Zell. I think even is Benzie still doing Eve Echoes content? I'm not even sure, but uh, check him yeah. out. He, he might still he be. Yes, he, he said that he's going to continue to support it as long as people, you know, find value in his videos. And of course, he's a very informative guy. He's been doing it he, since before the game launched. So he's the godfather yeah. of content creators, really. He really is. He really is. So definitely check out his stuff, too. And as always, we will be back next week to bring you more music and news to enhance your Sunday. In the meantime, if you happen to see somebody from Yale, throw a cat pun in local. They just love that. <laughs> All right. Love, hugs, and kisses, people. In the mix right now. Uh